Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and I'm going to show you in this video how to delete a record from a Cloud Firestore database on a Recycler View left or right swap. This is a video for an article that I wrote, link is in the description below, which was recently published on the official Firebase publication on Medium. Before di diving right into the code, let me show you how this simple application works. On the right, right hand side, there is a real device with a recycler view that holds a few product objects. We can scroll from top right to the bottom and if you want to delete a record, we can simply swipe, swipe from left to right or from right to left. There is also a progress bar which is displayed as long as the async uh, operation takes place. Now let me show you guys how our project looks like. First, let's see the dependencies with which I'm working in this project. Here are the Android dependencies for the constraint layout, for the recycler view, for the card view, and the Kotlin versions for the fragment, uh, the view model, and the live data. Here is also present Kotlin score team, uh, Firebase Firestore dependencies together with Dagger Hilt. We have a very simple structure in our project, which contains, contains a data package with two data classes. Because the response from a, Firebase, from a Firebase Firestore database call can be either the data or, or an exception, never both, we are using this data or exception class. And as you can see, it's a generic class. The second class is the product class with a few properties. Uh, we have the ID, the name, uh, the price, and the creation date. However, in this application, for simplicity, we'll only use the name property. The second, pack the second package is the DI, which stands for dependency injection and holds a single class that provides the objects that will be injected in our classes. And this is called app module. For example, to refer to our products collection will inject this collection reference object, which is composed of the root ref, which is the uh, a new instance of our Firebase Firestore. And in the end, we call collection, collection function. The third package is called products and holds the classes responsible for getting the products from the database and for displaying them in the activity using an adapter. But we'll get back in a few moments. The last, the last package is called utils and holds an interface with some constants. Let me show you. We have the, the tag. Uh, the second is the name of the collection in Firestore, which is obviously products. Uh, and the last one is the property name on which we'll do the ordering. For using Hilt, it's mandatory to have a class that extends application. This class should be annotated with Hilt Android app and added in the Android manifest file as well. Let me show you guys. See, we have set the name to products application. Now, let me close uh, all these windows and get, get back to our product package. And let's open the products activity, which has a very simple layout, which contains a recycler view and a progress bar within a relative layout. Because we are using data binding, all these views should be added inside a layout. You see? For each layout, a data binding object will be automatically created for us. Back into our uh, activity, as you can see, uh, we have defined an initialized or list, a list of products. This is it. And created a new instance of our adapter class by passing the list to its constructor. In our activity, we can directly use a view model object as it's already provided directly by the view models. Inside our onCreate, we set the content view to our data binding object using the activity products layout. Then we set the created adapter 
to our recycler view adapter by calling set product adapter function. The next step is to get the products from Firestore. And for that, for that, let's open our repository class, which is this. Because we are using Kotlin coroutines, we can create a suspend, a suspend function. <clears throat> and inside it, we can create a query, call get, and then simply, and then simply call await. In the end, we iterate and add each product object to the list. Now, from the view model class, we can call this, call this function and emit the result as a live data object. This object can then be observed directly from the activity class. Once the data, the data is available, there are two things that we need to, to do. The first one is to add the, uh, the product list to our existing products list by calling add function, this line right here. And the second one is to inform the adapter, uh, adapter about the changes. As soon as the data is finished loading, we also hide the progress bar. We are using two simple methods. One is uh, called display progress bar, where we set the um, visible to visible, and the second one where we hide and we set the visibil visibility to run. Now, let's take a look at our adapter class. Let me open it. Uh, in this class, we inflate in on create view uh, holder the item product layout, which is exactly this. As you can see, it's a simple card view containing a simple text view. Because you are using data binding, we can add a variable of type product that can be used to set the properties. See? This is how we set the name of the product to the text view. This line over here. But now let's get back to our adapter class to see the rest of the code. Uh, here. In onBind view holder function, we get the product object from the list and bind it for each view. In the view holder class inside the bind uh, inside the bind product function, we, we simply set the variable so it can be used in the layout file as seen before. We have now the products displayed in the recycler view. What remains us to do is to add the possibility to delete the product on the recycler view on a left or a right swipe. And for that, we'll use a swipe listener. Now, to know the position of the product that was swiped, inside onSwipe function, we get the adapter position right here, directly from the view holder object. Having this position, we can get the corresponding product object exactly from our list. Once we have the product, we can simply call delete product function and pass the position and the swipe product as arguments. This is the method that I was talking about. Back to our repository class. We can create again a suspend, a suspend function and construct a reference that points right to our product document. Then we can call delete and again await. Inside the view other class, we can emit the result again so it can be observed in our activity. When the product is successfully deleted from the database, we simply remove the product from the list. This is the line that is responsible for that and inform the adapter about two things. One, which is this. We inform that the item was removed from a specific location. And second, that the, range, that the range has just changed. In the end, obviously, we hide the progress bar again. So that's the entire operation that has to be done in order to delete the record from a Cloud Firestore database on a recycler view left or right side. In the next video, I will show you guys how to delete the record from Firestore using multi-selection. So in the end, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you think you learned something new, please subscribe to my channel as more videos are coming. Cheers!